This class is brought to you by the LA Care and Blue Shield Promise Community Resource Centers. The centers are a place to help you be active, healthy, and informed. We hope you enjoy this virtual class. Hello, my name is Sonia Guzman. Today we will be talking about how to read food labels. Usually when we have these classes, we talk about a nutrition topic and we cook uh, different kinds of recipes. So today we won't be doing that. We are only going to be focusing on how to read food labels to help you with foods that you already have at home or perhaps with foods that you are planning on buying. And so the goal is to help you make better health decisions by understanding how to read food labels. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Um, I have here different foods that we are going to be using as our examples um, when, as we talk about the different factors that we want to look at when we read food labels, okay? So first of all, let me tell you what we mean by a food label. And so by food label, we're talking about this here, right? That gives us the nutritional facts of the foods that we are eating. We have, for example, calories, total fat, cholesterol, sodium, potassium, total carbohydrates, and protein. So let's talk about some of these factors and what they mean to us. So the first factor that we're going to look at is the calories. Now the thing to keep in mind with calories is that we all have a certain amount of calories that our bodies need. Our bodies need calories to do its everyday things such as sleeping, resting, sitting down. Um, and then they also need calories to do the things that we do outside of the home. Exercise, work, anything really requires calories, right? Calories mean energy. What happens is that um, a lot of times people think, you know, they're not going to eat certain kinds of foods or certain things because those things specifically are the ones that are going to cause them to gain weight. That's most of the time that's the concern. So the thing to know about calories is that it's not so much about the certain diff or the different kinds of foods that we eat in regards to say gaining weight. It's really in how many calories we eat. What that means is that let's say for example, it's 10 p.m. and you just have this craving that you want to, you know, you, you want something sweet. And rather than have say a piece of candy, you go and you have a piece of fruit because fruit is healthier than the candy. Now, here's the thing. If you already burnt all of the calories that you are going to burn for the day, then anything else that you eat, whether it's the fruit or the candy, it's extra calories and now your body has to store that somewhere. It's not gonna burn it anymore because your body already burned all of the calories that you're going to eat. Now I'm making an assumption, right, just to give the example, um, but the idea is, again, that it's not so much about the kinds of foods that we eat in regards to whether or not we gain weight, it's about the calories. So you wanna make sure that you look at the number of calories that are in different foods. Now, whether I eat a piece of candy or a piece of fruit, the nutritional value of both is going to be very different. The fruit is going to be a better choice because it's going to give me vitamins, it's going to give me minerals, and it's going to give me fiber. But in regards to gaining weight, again, most of the time that's the concern. Um, it's really in the calories, okay? So, uh, based on your level of activity, your age, different factors, um, there's a lot of different programs out there that can help you figure out how many calories you personally should be eating. And then based on that, then you can go ahead and make your decision as to what kinds of foods you're going to eat to meet those caloric needs, okay? Um, but it's important to consider the calories because here, for example, it tells you that one serving is 120 calories. The nice thing about this one though is that it already comes prepackaged. When you're talking about things like this one, this one is not prepackaged, right? In regards to being prepackaged as a serving. This one has two servings in it. So if I was to eat this whole thing, it tells me that one serving has 100 calories, but if I eat the whole thing, I'm looking at 230 calories, okay? So it's important to look at the calories. And with that, it's also important to look at the number of servings because you wanna make sure that you calculate the calories correctly, okay? So remember, whatever calories we eat, then if we burn the same amount of calories, then we're good. Our weight is not going to change. But if we eat more calories than what we burn, then yes, our weight is going to change. And then it can be the other way as well, right? Where maybe we eat less calories than we 
then we burn, then we start losing weight, okay? But in all of that, we wanna make sure um, that we try to eat foods that are nutritious so that we don't have any nutritional deficiencies, okay? All right, so with that, let's go ahead and move on to the next factor that we want to look at. And as I mentioned, we want to look at the serving size, okay? So here we have Ritz crackers. Now these Ritz crackers, it says that they are baked with whole wheat. So that's a good thing, right? Most of us would look at this and say, okay, it's whole wheat, it's pretty good. Um, that is important, actually. It is important for us to look for foods that are whole wheat. Uh, but even so, we still want to make sure that we read the list of ingredients, which we will get to, to really truly make sure that it is whole wheat or what it means by whole wheat. Now the serving size. A lot of times people grab these rich crackers and they just grab the packet and they eat crackers and they eat crackers till they get full, right? Well, here it tells me that a serving size is just five crackers, okay? So serving size calories. If I eat five crackers, I am eating 70 calories. But let's say that I eat the whole, I don't know, the whole strip of crackers, right? Let's say that in that there's there's 25 crackers, okay? And so that would be five servings. So if I eat that whole thing with 25 crackers, then that means that I would eat 70 times the five, right? Because I'm eating five servings of it. So 70 times five, that's 350 calories instead of the 70 calories per serving. So again, that's how the two factors work together. Look at the number of calories and the number of servings. This here, as we mentioned, is two servings, okay? Um, cereal, here, you're talking about one cup. That's a serving, one cup. That's, it's, it's small, it's not, you know, the typical, perhaps big bowl that people usually can get. Um, so a cup here gives me 140 calories. If I serve myself a big bowl, it might be two portions, right? Or two servings instead of just one, which then would take me to 280 calories. So let's look at the serving size and it's all here in the nutrition facts. You see first serving size and then servings per container, okay? So look at that information because that's really important. The next thing that we want to look at is fiber. Now, we've been talking a lot about fiber. I think we've mentioned it so far in pretty much every class that we have done. And fiber is super important, okay? Fiber, we know, helps us with our digestive system. It helps us with cholesterol, right? Um, so it helps us for a lot of different things. We wanna make sure that when we purchase things, particularly these things, right, that are, that are processed food, that they have sufficient fiber. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for at least five grams of fiber per serving. So even this one, the, um, the oatmeal, the little packet only gives me three grams of fiber per serving, okay? So knowing that, let's say that I wanted to make sure that this one gave me the five grams of fiber, I can always add things like um, flaxseed, I can add things like chia seeds, um, or even different kinds of fruit, so that it helps to increase the fiber content of that food, okay? But things like the Ritz crackers, these are not gonna give me a lot of fiber. They say that it has less than one gram for every serving. I wanna make sure that I look at the labels to try and achieve that 25 to 38 grams of fiber per day. Now, it's important um, that I also drink a lot of water if I am going to start eating more fiber because uh, water is necessary. For soluble fiber, Water is necessary because the soluble fiber traps the water and that helps create a gel-like consistency, right? That helps us with transporting food from the stomach to the um, intestine. And then um, insoluble fiber, it needs the water so it can expand because it helps us move things faster through the intestine, out of the body, get rid of anything that doesn't belong in there. So make sure when we, when we look at our foods that they have fiber. This one here only has three grams per packet. The Progresso has only one gram, and that's again for one serving, which is half of this. This here, this is corn, and again, this one here, again, one gram. 
and here we have three and a half servings. So let's say that I was going to eat the whole can of corn, then I'm talking about three and a half grams of fiber. Now the cereal here, the puffins, the cup serving gives me three grams of fiber. So again, still a little bit low, but three is better than less than one, right? So let's be selective, particularly if we do have some health issues like, um, like diabetes, then yeah, we definitely want to make sure that we look at the fiber content in foods because again, it's going to help us with transporting foods from the stomach into the intestine and in that way help us um, to keep our blood sugar levels consistent, right? So we don't get the sudden spikes. The next thing that I want to look at is fat, okay? Now with fat, I'm going to find that my food has uh, lists the number of grams of fat, right? And then it's going to tell me, it breaks it down for me into saturated trans and then polyunsaturated and monounsaturated, okay? What I want to avoid here are the two top ones. I want to avoid saturated fat as much as I can and I definitely want to avoid trans fats, okay? Um, trans fats are those that were liquid and hydrogen was added to them to make them more solid, okay? And so the problem with trans fats is that they can get into the body and cause a lot of health issues. So if it says that it has partially hydrogenated fats in the ingredient list, especially if you have any health issues that have to do with the circulatory system, you want to make sure that you try to avoid trans fats as much as possible. The good thing is that back in 2006, manufacturers uh, were required to start listing the amount of trans fat in foods. Before that, we didn't really know. We just knew that it had fat and I believe if I remember correctly, maybe it listed the saturated fat. So now we can actually look at the food labels, such as this one, right? It says saturated, trans, polyunsaturated, and monounsaturated. So now it actually lists the trans fats that are in foods, so you can um, make better choices regarding your food, okay? All right, so that's the um, information on fat. Next, we want to look at the amount of sodium in foods. And this is another important factor, especially if you already have issues like high blood pressure, where uh, the recommendation is that you start lowering your sodium intake. But in general, there is a recommendation for sodium consumption. And the recommendation is that we eat no more than 2,300 milligrams per day of sodium, okay? 2,300 milligrams per day okay and that's the the recommendation um, for adults that have health issues it, the recommendation is 1500 milligrams per day okay and particularly with processed foods like these you really want to look at the amount of sodium that they contain especially when you're talking about soups such as these two you might be surprised as to how much sodium they contain. So for example, this one here, um, it's one packet would be a serving. This is Bear Creek creamy potato soup. And so the one packet of soup is giving me 970 milligrams of sodium, which is 40% of my daily recommendation, okay? So think about that, that's just in one soup. We're still gonna eat probably a lot of other different things. And in one soup, we are already at almost halfway through uh, to our sodium recommendation, okay? So soups is really where you're gonna find a lot of sodium. This one here, remember, this is, this is two servings in this can. So if somebody was to eat the whole can, they're eating in, in this soup, this 60% of their daily recommendation. So this one is even closer to 100. It's incredible the amount of salt that is added to foods and sometimes we don't really realize it because again, we don't look at the labels, we just eat the foods. Now, the easiest way to reduce your sodium intake is to reduce your consumption of processed foods. So the more that you stick to foods that are fresh, the greater the chances, right, that you're not gonna be consuming a lot of sodium. And keep in mind that um, 2300 
again, it's a recommendation and, and that's really, it's, it's the high limit, even though on average we are eating more than 3,000. So we are way past the 2,300 and certainly way past the 1,500 for people that might already have health issues. Um, so take a look at your, at your foods that you eat, take a look at the labels and stick to fresh foods as much as possible. Okay, next thing that I want to look at is sugar, okay? Now sugar, uh, the problem with sugar is that sugar comes hidden under many names. There's hundreds of names for sugars, okay? You are talking things like high fructose corn syrup or just corn syrup, dextrose, um, turbinado, invert sugar, sugar, a lot of different names for sugar. And sometimes people don't realize it because they don't know. And if you look at the label, it will tell you all of the different ingredients and it will list the ones that are sugar. If it has five different kinds of sugars, they're all going to be listed on the label, okay? So for example, this one here, the crackers, let me see, high fructose corn syrup. So there's sugar there. Uh, the oatmeal, sugar and let's see the cereal cane sugar again sugar is going to be under under several different names if you want to select a food that can be considered healthy quote unquote then what you are looking for is a food that per serving has less than five grams of sugar and the nice thing about foods is that they actually uh, will tell you in regards to the carbohydrates, what's fiber and what is sugars. So this one, for example, per serving, this one has four grams of sugar, and then one of the other flavors, the apple cinnamon, has five grams of sugar. So even this one, even though it's oatmeal, because of the added flavors, it almost didn't meet that requirement where no more than five grams of sugar per serving. This one here, the crackers, has two grams of sugar per serving, but again, a serving is five crackers. So if you eat 25 crackers, 10 crackers, 15 crackers, you're getting close to the, the recommendation or going over, okay? Um, the soup has three grams of sugar per packet. So with sugar, not so bad, but with sodium, really bad. And then the cereal has nine grams of sugar per serving. So this cereal has uh, too much sugar. There's also a daily limit for men and women and children. Now, what I think is interesting with sugar is that it's not called a recommendation, it's called a limit. And basically, you know, you really want to stay below that. Um, there is no limit for children under two because at that age, they really should not be eating any sugar, period. But the limit for men, for example, is nine teaspoons of sugar, okay? nine teaspoons of sugar and then for women we are talking about six teaspoons of sugar so it's less and then for children two to 18 years of age it's also six teaspoons okay it's not a lot in other classes we've talked about sugar and we've seen how even um, drinks right like say for example a coke um, could have close to or even more than the actual nine teaspoons of sugar. I mean, it's, it's very easy to reach this limit. Now, when you read the label, it gives you the sugar in grams. It doesn't give you the sugar in teaspoons. So what you want to do as you are reading the label, for example, this one tells me that it has four grams of sugar per serving. Four grams is a teaspoon. So if it has four grams and four grams is, is one teaspoon, then if I divide that, right, by four, then that gives me one teaspoon, okay? 
And so each packet of the oatmeal has one teaspoon of sugar. Now the cereal tells me that it has nine, okay? Nine grams of sugar. So if I divide that by four, then I'm talking about a little bit over two teaspoons of sugar. And again, that's assuming that the person, right, is gonna eat just a one cup serving, because this is per serving. So start looking at all those things that you eat, that you drink. Maybe you like to drink coffee late at night before you go to sleep and you add sugar to your coffee. Remember, those calories are counting. And if you are trying to improve your health, then certainly that's not the way to go. The next thing that we are going to look at is the percent DV. And the percent uh, DV or percent daily value is just the number, okay, the percent um, of what you are consuming. So let's say, for example, this one tells me that um, a packet has two grams of fat, which is 3% of the daily value. So the daily value is based on a 2,000 calorie diet, okay? So if I was following a 2,000 calorie diet, um, then this is gonna tell me what percent of that diet, right, of the 2,000 calories I am consuming in the different types of things. So in fat, what percent I'm consuming based on a 2,000 calorie diet. Although now, labels also include um, percentages for 2,500 calories. Okay, so 2,000 and it'll also tell you for 2,500. So again, it's just telling me the percentage based on whichever you know, diet I'm following, 2,000 calories, 2,500 calories, what percent of that, right? Am I already fulfilling or consuming in the foods that I eat? Now, if you are following a diet with a different number of calories, then certainly this number wouldn't really matter because it's not based on your particular diet that you're following. If you're following a diet with less calories, then you can calculate your own percentages. So moving on, we're almost done. We are now going to look at the ingredient list, okay? So let me go ahead and erase this. Now with the ingredient list, what I want to keep in mind is that they are going to be listed from greatest to least, okay? So for example, the oatmeal. The first ingredient that is listed is whole grain oats. The second ingredient that is listed is sugar. And the third ingredient that is listed is salt. So the majority of this is the oats, then sugar, and then salt. All right, so I certainly don't want to see sugar in one of the first ingredients because then that means that whatever it is that I'm eating is primarily sugar, right? Uh, so look at the ingredient list to see what it is that makes up your food. This one, for example, has potatoes, but then it has cornstarch, and then it has corn syrup solids, another name for sugar, and then it has oil, and then it has also monosodium glutamate, which is MSG, and so that's, again, another thing that a lot of people are trying to avoid. At the very end, it tells me that it has yellow number five, which then means that this has artificial colors. All right, so look at the ingredients, just as important as looking at all the other information. And whatever um, it is that you need to avoid, say you have allergies, or you're just trying to not eat certain types of things, look at the list, because it will tell you whether or not those things are in your food. This one here, for example, this is corn, and it actually has corn, water, and salt. So let's say that you are trying to avoid salt, then what you can do to reduce the salt content and things like this would be like to rinse it, okay? Rinse it to remove as much of the salt as possible. And the last thing that I'm going to do, I know we already talked about fat, but uh, um, I, can, I think it's important, right? To look at fat and to be able to determine what percentage of my food is fat. So let me go back to that, okay? Okay, so fat, again, it tells me how much fat it has in grams, right? So let's say, for example, this one here. Okay, going back to, let me go somewhere else. We keep using the oatmeal as an example. Okay, the crackers, they have two and a half grams of fat. Okay, 
Now, each gram of fat has nine calories. So what I want to do here is I want to multiply this by nine. That would be five, Okay, so it has 22.5 calories of fat. So what I want to do with that number is I want to look at the total number of calories in the serving. Okay, so these are just the calories that come from fat, but calories overall is 70. Okay, so if I take the 22.5 and I divide it by 70, 22.5 divided by 70, and then I multiply that by 100, this is telling me that 32% of my crackers is actually fat, okay? 32% of the crackers of every serving that I eat is fat. If I look at this one here, this one has three and a half grams. So if I multiply that by nine, So that's 31.5 calories of fat, and the total calories is 140. So again, the calculator. So 23% of this soup is fat. And remember, we don't just want to look at the fat. This one is actually telling me that it has three and a half grams of fat, but two of those grams are saturated fat. And so that's one of the fats that we mentioned, right, that we want to avoid because those are the fats that can then get into our body and start damaging our circulatory system. The fact that they are actually saturated fat, not a good thing. 23% of this, okay, is fat. And if we want to be exact with the saturated fat, and so it's telling me that it has two grams of saturated fat, two times nine, because remember, each gram of fat has nine calories, gives me 18. And then I divide that by the total number of calories, multiply that by 100. So 30% of a serving is saturated fat. And if you want more information on how to calculate uh, fat in foods, um, there's a lot of different websites that can help you with that and they can walk you um, step by step. And so with that, we've reached the end of our presentation. I hope that this helps you to make better decisions with your food for yourself and your family. Thank you so much for joining me. We look forward to seeing you virtually again next week and at one of our research centers as soon as we can. Until then, stay active, healthy, and informed.